No, 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 Gil, no, no, no. You know what? You're not being racist. No, Gil. You are being a coon. Wow. So let me first start off by saying um, I'm a huge fan of Girls Arena. Huge fan. Massive fan. I literally watch the show every day. Like literally every single day I watch the show every day. I watch the live show. I watch the clips. So I am a massive consumer of it. And for me, Girls Arena is entertainment. Gilbert Arenas is an entertaining individual. Now that statement can maybe go a bit far, but... He's entertaining. So when people DM'd me and say, yo, is this your guy? Is this your guy? Is this guy that you're rapping? I'm like, wait, what do you mean by the guy I'm rapping? It's like, is this the guy you're rapping? And then they showed me what it was about. I was like, oh my God. Because I'm going to tell you what this is and what this isn't. Because this is certainly something and it taints another thing. So we, I just wanted to be very clear with what this truly is. Because... I've already cooked him, bro. I've already, I've already left messages on his Instagram thing saying, bro, you're a, you're a clown. You're a coon. You're a loser. You're a self-hating Dumbo. <laughs> and that is of a fan, a huge fan of his, his show. So where did this all start? So we've got to start. Where should we start? We should start. Um, yeah. What South Sudan did was incredible. Absolutely in, in, in incredible. Even if they lost the, the game, the only narrative that should be said is, wow, what an effort. You were beating Team USA at halftime, and it took a last final drive by freaking LeBron James, one of the greatest players of all time, to, to have a win, and, the only, and they only won by a single point. A team with Steph Curry, with LeBron, with Embiid, with Drew Holiday, with Devin Booker, <laughs> that team with all of those superstar players, with all the resources, all the training, all the access to the best trainers and coaching, Tai Lu coaching, Steve Kerr coaching, you only won by points. So now she, what everyone said was, wow, South Sudan, well freaking done. Well freaking done. A country that's about 13 or 14 years, a country that has been ravaged by, um, by war and strife, hence why it was called Sudan before. And because of war and everything, they had to split. So that's why you have South Sudan now. So this is a country who, because Gilbert Arenas is a dumbo and he's a geographical brick and doesn't actually understand anything out of America, he would have known that, yes, for a country that has gone through so much famine, so much war, to be able to even produce a basketball team is a miracle. Forget about what they did. To even produce a basketball team based on what that country has been through is freaking insane. And to produce a basketball team that can take Team USA to the last seconds of the fourth quarter for them to only win by a point, it's a miracle. So the only thing that anybody should be saying is, Team USA, that is embarrassing. And for South Sudan, wow. <laughs> Wow. Wow. That what an effort. You know, because there are times when in a loss you win. So for Team USA, that wasn't a win. No one even sees it as when they're like, okay, wh wh whatever. For South Sudan, that was a loss that felt like a win. <laughs> so, but not according to Gilbert Arenas. Not according to Gilbert Arenas, because this is what this moron said. So, first of all, wait, where, where, where should we start? Um the males almost lost to some Africans. Let's stop there. Let's stop there. Gilbert Arenas, really his name is like Gilberto Arenas. So he's really Cuban. And the people from Cuba, if you go far enough, they're Africans. So you clown your ancestors, if you go far enough, if you ask your dad, because his dad is Cuban, they are Africans and they have links to Africa. Okay, so all those dark skin and black people you see from Cuba, their, their ancestry is African. Okay, so you, your, your link is to Africa. So you're insulting yourself, you moron. We almost lost 
and the king had to save us. I know the Lebron haters are mad. We almost lost to the Ahi Ahi tribe. This is crazy. So he thinks he's funny there. So, oh, let me guess. So Africa, oh, Ahi Ahi tribe. Oh, funny, funny. <laughs> but you sound stupid because you're insulting yourself. Hence why we look at the comments and no one is laughing. Guys, I mean, you're a clown. And again, but I'm going to remind people what this truly is. Um... So, okay, so that's so that's this. So, and this one. Man, Embiid over there, God, I'm throwing the game because he's, th because he's, he's, he's throwing the game for his cousins. So, again, Embiid, because he's African, those are obviously his cousins. You see, you see Gilbert, Gil, that is a joke that a white guy would crack. Yeah, it's a, from a white guy. Yeah, hey, hey, look at your cousin, everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People have cried that joke about me. Hey, who are those, those are your cousins? Those are your cousins here. Yeah. So I, I expect that from a white guy. I don't expect that from a black guy whose ancestry is African. So you sound so stupid. We're not supposed to, to listen to them. Come on, man. Cool runnings. We're not supposed to lose to some cool running team. They don't even have shoes. They get shoes from America. We have to ship them shoes. Um, so remember, this guy, he's a geographical brick. Cool runnings is a film. That's about a Jamaican bobsleigh team. For me, I found I found the film cheesy, cheesy as heck. So I'm not a fan of the, of the film. So they are Jamaicans, not Africans. <laughs> so I said again, they are Jamaicans, not Africans. So why are you conflating Jamaicans with Africans? Oh, because it's not an American and there's just guys with an accent. Oh, this cool running steam. Again, he thinks he's funny, but no, you don't sound funny. You sound like a self-hating coon. <laughs> and that's going to be the theme of this video. That's, Gil, you're not funny. You sound like a coon. Um, and we're listening to some people who are shooting on peach baskets in debt. No, no shoes. Again, that's something a white man would say. So from a white guy, oh well, yeah, yeah, typical racist thing. Because the mistake people are making is, with this whole thing is, and they're calling Gilbert xenophobic and racist. That's not, no, 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 no. Gil was not being xenophobic. He was not being racist, no. See, from a white guy, it's racist. No, Gil, because that's the key thing. Because if it's now him being racist, then Gil now comes and apologizes and just says, oh, I'm sorry for being racist. Those were very racist things and very xenophobic things, and I will now learn my lesson from for being racist. No, 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 Gil, no, no, no. You're not, weird. You're not being racist, no. Gil, you are being a coon. You are being a coon. You're not, you're not being racist, no. Because that is what Gil wants to receive is that he wants a separation from himself and Africa because he feels that as a black American, no, you're actually not, you're actually really Cuban. But as a black American, he is better and superior to these Africans in mud huts who are still uncivilized. Even though, yes, there are rundown places in Africa, but you go to Nigeria, you go to Rwanda, you go to South Africa, you go to Kenya, you go to Ethiopia, you will see high-rise buildings. You will see advanced stuff. You will see, you will see stuff that is very advanced there. So there's, a, there's, the, but again, it's of a guy who has never set foot on Africa. He's never been to an African country. But again, he's just not being racist. No, you're being a coon. You are a coon. You are a sellout. Your uncle Rockus. <laughs> So please, let it be clear, do not call Gil racist. No, do not, because that's what he wants. You are not a black American who is now superior and now just being racist. No, 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 no. Because your ancestry is African. So you are insulting yourself. You, you are not a white man. So if he was white, oh, then you're being racist. But no, you're not white, you are black. And you're a black man with ancestry that links to Africa. So you're linked there. So no, you're not being racist. You're being a coon. You're being a sellout. You're being an Uncle Ruckus. That's what it is. <laughs> so, and for me, this is what I always said as I look. Um, the whole African, African-American thing, I just think is very sad. On both sides. Africans, don't you dare chastise and insult African-Americans about, oh, look at how these guys are, the, the negative stereotype, they're all thugs. No. You have to look at the history of African-Americans, how their history was stripped away, away from them, and how through... 
how they were mentally raped by the white slave masters. So there are many reasons why they are in the situation they are psychologically. So for Africans to now chastise them and think they're better than them, you're being foolish and you're being idiotic and very uneducated with what African Americans have had to go through. From the African American side, you are Africa. You can't run from it. You can't be bigger than you are African. You will never be, be American. You'll never be accepted by America. You have never had an African American president. Barack Obama's father was from Kenya. And his mother was from Iowa. His, his white mother was from Iowa. His father was from Kenya. So that isn't your president. Because that is not an African American president. Because his father was not African American. His father was African, Kenya. And his mother was white from Iowa. So you can say, oh, America, America, America. Okay. How come you've never had a, a president for this country that you're fighting about? No. So America will never be you. You will never be fully American. It will never happen. <laughs> Listen to your boy, Dr. Uma. He's been trying to tell you, you are American African. <laughs> okay. So what needs to happen is both sides have to come together. And this is what I always say. And this is going to be very difficult. My dream is for every African American to visit Africa. Spend a week there. Your mind will, will change. Same thing for Gil. Because it was like, I remember it was... Um, Richard Pryor, before he went to Africa, N-word, 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 N-word. He went to Africa, so everyone was black. Everybody, lawyers are black, poor people are black, rich people are black, bankers are black, police are, are black. And it's like, man, this whole N-word doesn't make sense. And his brain switched. And what that can do for African-Americans, just going to Africa and just seeing a world where everyone is black, everything is black, it will do something to you psychologically because... For many African Americans who have not been to Africa, you are still mentally enslaved. You are mentally enslaved because of the construct that has been built from America. Like, slavery wasn't just physical. No, the greatest success of slavery was the psychological prison that they put African Americans into. So that's what I suggest for Gil. But the thing, though, is... Wait, where's the thing? That's embarrassing. That is embarrassing. That's Team USA. I don't care whether it was an exhibition. To win by only a point, that is embarrassing. That is fully embarrassing that Team USA beats South Sudan, a recently made country, by a point. Um, and so for South Sudan, you should be fully, fully proud. 100% proud. And I'm just so angry they didn't win. Like, because if they had won the game, oh my gosh, we'd have been having a very different conversation and I would have loved to see what Gil would have said then. But because, see, here's the thing. So you see, growing up, I always felt that the most unbeatable sports team on the planet is the US basketball team. But this was of me, of a guy growing up in the 90s. I was like, bro, no one is touching them. So based on just how good those guys were in the 90s and just how the rest of the world were just not very good, I was like, bro, the, the gap in quality between the U.S. team and the rest of the world, it's gargantuan where if the team USA puts their best possible team, they are unbeatable. They can't lose. It's impossible. But that was back in the 90s. And we've now fast-forwarded to um, 2024. And in 2024, it's a new world. Europe is catching up. And Europe is, is closing the gap. And they're closing the gap so much. And this is watching what Gil has been fighting against. Because Gil has been like, oh, no, no. America is still the best. America is still the best. That's what Gil is still fighting. But facts are facts. The best players right now in the NBA are European. Shout out to the Celtics with what Jason Tatum did and what Jalen Brown did. But when you think of the best basketball players, you think of Doncic, you think of Jokic, you think of Giannis. And we look at the past MVPs. They've been non-American. Embiid only just became American yesterday. So for me, I'm, I still view Embiid as a dude from Cameroon. So I don't even, I don't know view Embiid as an American. <laughs> no, because you, you just changed just now. Just as how Hakim Olajuwon will always be Nigerian, essentially to, to me. So Europe is catching up. So it's a whole different one. So America cannot still have this whole idea of like, oh, no, no, we are still the best. We're number one. And here's my thing. This is my dream. I really hope another country wins the gold medal. 
Because see, because 2004, I think you had Iverson there, you had Tim Duncan there, but it's people argue that it wasn't really the full team. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think in all four, it wasn't really the strongest possible team. This is the strongest possible team that, that's out there. So what I want is, even if I still believe the US will win the gold medal, but I would love just for the narrative for someone else to win the gold medal. You know, because again, the world is, is catching up. And it's a whole new world. And in the NBA that is created and owned by America, Americans aren't even the best at that. And once LeBron retires, once Steph Curry re retires, when Benyama is coming through, Doncic is coming through, Jokic and Yanis have already established them themselves. The faces of the American NBA are non-Americans. And that's just a fact, you know? So, but again, for Gil, he's not racist. Please don't put that racist thing next to Gil. He is a self-hating, clownish coon that represents Uncle Ruckus.